Nine will be in startup. The rocket's autonomous internal flight Ground computers will have taken over the launch countdown. The call out you just heard now, ground gas closeouts. We're venting down the lines on the strong back. Make sure that they're empty before the Falcon 9 lifts off. As we get into the final minute, the terminal sequence, inside of T minus two seconds, we'll light the Merlin engines. But right now, as we wait for the call out at T minus one, everything continues to be go for launch. Falcon 9 is in start. Falcon flight computers now controlling the launch vehicle. Ground computers are doing the last steps here for ground systems. LD, go for launch. That should be the last call out. The SpaceX launch director gave the go for launch. We're coming up on the T minus 35 second mark. Everything is go. Let's listen in to the launch of Falcon 9 with Empower E. Plus 30 seconds, and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. We're carrying the two O3B Empower satellites. We've heard the initial call out. Stage one propulsion is nominal, and the Falcon 9 is beginning the pitch down range. Power and telemetry nominal. Avionics confirms power and telemetry coming from the first second stage are nominal on Falcon 9. We're into the throttle bucket Falcon right now. Falcon 9 is supersonic. We've heard the call, we're supersonic. And engines have throttled back up as we're coming Max through Q. the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Guidance officer calls out Max Q, confirming we're through the period of greatest stress. Nine Merlin engines running at full power. Now on your screen, you can see on the left, the speed and the altitude of the first stage. Stage separation will occur at about 8,200 kilometers per hour. And in order to get into the initial orbit, what we call the parking yeah, orbit, started. the Falcon 9 has to gain enough speed to reach about 27,000 kilometers per hour. That's a bit under the 17,000 miles per hour used as a rule of thumb for the low Earth orbit velocity. Now we've got several events coming up in about half a minute. We're going to have main engine cutoff. Then a few seconds later, we get stage separation. And then the second stage engine start number one called SES-1. During main engine cutoff, we're going to shut down the nine Merlin engines. Then we'll get the stage separation. And once we're separated, take a look for in the daylight. You should be able to see the view of the first stage as we begin a slow flip to orient the first stage back towards Earth while simultaneously the MBAC engine on the second stage will ignite for the first time. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. MBAC ignition. We've heard it and seen it. We've got successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, ignition of the second stage engine. Nice views late in the afternoon as we're leaving Florida and maybe even a little bit of the contrail visible in the distance behind the second stage nozzle. And on the left side, you can see the first stage. Coming up now is fairing separation in about five seconds.
Bearing separation confirmed. Well, we saw in the uh, background the fairing separate. As we had mentioned at the start of the webcast, the payload adapter we use for the Empower satellites blocks the view of the camera, uh, which is one reason the webcast will be ending once the first stage lands and the second stage gets into its parking Vehicles orbit. Vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. GNC with the right call out, we're on nominal trajectory. We're coming up on four minutes into today's mission. Now, as I mentioned, if we were bringing the first stage back to a land landing, we'd do what we call a fast flip. That would quickly turn the stage around. But we're going downrange to the drone ship, so we do a more leisurely flip, and it's not quite uh, as fast as we would do for a land landing. In fact, you can see the stage is slowly rotating. It's moving at a speed less than one degree per second. Now, coming up in two minutes, we expect to have views of the first stage's entry burn, and in the entry burn, we'll relight three of the M1D engines on the first stage. We start with the center engine, what we call E9, and then we follow it up shortly afterwards with engines one and five. And that'll slow down the vehicle as it gets ready to pass back into the Earth's atmosphere. Now we need to slow down in order to reduce that re-entry heating. And that ultimately helps us to recover and reuse the first stage. Now, if you've been watching on the left side, you'll notice the altitude of the first stage has reached its peak. I think it got to about 123 kilometers. And now it's beginning the trip back down to the Earth's surface. Now, it took us about two minutes from stage separation until the first stage reached its maximum height, and it's going to take us another two minutes to come back down to the altitude where the entry burn begins. Now, this portion of flight is in the vacuum, and you can see the grid fins on the first stage view from the interstage camera. Uh, not right now. We're looking on the inside of the interstage, but on the outside, you can see the grid fins. They don't have a function right now. They're deployed, but there's no atmosphere for them to react with. The grid fins come into play after the entry burn once we start to bite into the Earth's atmosphere. Now, during the entry burn, Falcon 9 is going to be decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's not slowing down all that much. It, it's bringing it somewhat down. But that means that we're going to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, what we call the rocket's plume. And that's what deposits that layer of soot on the vehicle tanks, which is why our flight-proven vehicles look so sooty. That comes from the fuel that Falcon 9 uses. Coming up in about 10 seconds, we should have entry burn. Wait for the call out, see if we can spot it on the camera. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS has saved. Entry burn's begun. The center engine is lit. That's kind of the circular plume. And now engines one and five come in, and that's why the plume changes uh, shape that you can see on your screen. Waiting for entry burn shutdown. Stage one entry burn shutdown. On time, we've got shutdown. Entry burn looks good. So now that we've completed the entry burn, the first stage begins entering the Earth's atmosphere. Now the maximum deceleration is going to happen in about 15 seconds. The first stage will experience about 5 Gs, but because we perform the entry burn, this portion of flight is not as difficult for the first stage. If we didn't have the entry burn, the first stage would have a tougher time coming in for the landing without compromising reusability. And reusability is key to lowering the cost of space flight. Stage internal guidance. Now, coming up next, we've heard terminal guidance on second stage. We're now controlling the angular momentum state of the second stage. We're going to get MVAC engine shut down in about 20 seconds. And then right after that, we should get into the stage landing burn sequence on first stage. Reminder, the first stage, stage two, FTS has is eight. targeting a drone ship landing out in the Atlantic Ocean. Waiting for the call out for SECO. We've got MVAC engine shutdown. Nominal parking orbit. Stage one landing burn. And both call outs right on time. Guidance reports a nominal parking orbit for the second stage. The first stage has begun the landing burn. Headed to the drone ship on the power of the center engine E9. 
stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. All right, and we have touchdown of formerly new booster on the first on the uh, drone ship out in the Atlantic. So there you have it. That landing marks SpaceX's 385th recovery of an orbital class rocket. That includes first stage landings for both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Meanwhile, the second stage, there's a great view, and I think in the distance you can see a little bit of the uh, contrail in the upper atmosphere as we headed east out of the Cape uh, just before sunset. And so we're watching the last glow of the sun uh, as the second stage heads eastward into uh, the shadow of the Earth. So second stage embarking now on the initial coast phase. The view you're seeing there, that's the payload adapter. The Empower spacecraft are just on top, but they're hidden from view. And so with that, we're not expecting to have great views of payload deploy, and we're going to end the webcast at this point. But keep an eye out on our X account for confirmation of payload deploy. That comes around the T plus two hour mark. With that, we want to thank you for joining us for SpaceX's 128th launch of 2024. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer, SES, for entrusting us with today's mission and for their ongoing partnership. We also want to thank Kennedy Space Center, the Eastern Range, and the FAA for supporting today's launch. And as always, thanks to all our viewers for logging on and your continued support. Remember to follow at SpaceX on X for launch updates. Thank you, and we'll see you again soon.